Um, welcome once again to our weekly session of Gather to Grow here on Food for Mzanzi's Twitter Spaces. As you know, my name is Dor Numdu. For those that might not know me, I host these sessions every week. And I also host a weekly farmers podcast called Farmers Inside Track. And this is also where you can get lots of information on all things farming. So that's just a bit about me. I'm an agricultural journalist, and I'm so happy to be able to be in this space with all of you just for the love of agriculture and the love of the sector. I see my other guest is also here. I'm going to start with Ipeleng Kwadi, who I think really doesn't need any introduction when it comes to <laughs> telling you who she is. She's an absolutely dynamic woman in agriculture, livestock farmer. That more just for those that might not know you, Ipeleng, more about you. Um, thank you so much, Don, for the love of agriculture, for the love of farming. Hello, everyone. My name is Ipeleng Kwadi Siboni, and I'm a cattle farmer based in the Northwest Province in Bred. Also, the chairperson of Youth in Agriculture in the Northwest Province. I'm also on the mentorship programs of agriculture with your NYDA and also on the mentorship of the province in the Northwest, a office of the Premier. Thank you, Ipe Leng, and you do absolutely amazing work. I'm a super fan. I follow you wherever you are, whatever you're busy with. I'm always wondering what you're up to. So thank you so much for just keeping us updated on all that is happening in your province and specifically with your commodity. Thank you so much. Um, my other guest is Dr. Masindi. He is from the Agricultural Research Council and his focus area is specifically on the reproduction and physiology of cattle. And so we welcome him here for the first time and he's a newbie to Twitter Spaces. So thank you so much for being here and for, for sharing the space with us. More maybe just that is, as an introduction, more about you. So my name is Masindi Papati. I work at the Agriculture Research Council here in Pretoria, Irene. So my research focus area is on the reproduction and physiology in cattle. So I do all the work or research on the semen collection from the cattle, sheep, goats, pigs, chicken. Evaluate the semen quality and the sperm motility parameters. And then after that, we then freeze or cry preserve that semen for future use. Or for example, the semen that we collect, we can freeze today, then we can use it later when we conduct artificial insemination in the, in the females. Or we can use that semen when we conduct the in vitro embryo production in the lab. So I also do more research on the embryo production in vivo. This includes the superovulation, the flushing of those embryo, and later transfer or can cry present them for, for future use. Also, do more space of embryo loss or pregnancy loss so that we can try to understand why you see animal being mounted and then in the next month you see the animal is also interested to the bull again. So we try to understand what is happening regarding to the embryo loss. On the other side, I also supervise students, masters and PhD students from different universities in South Africa and also collaborate with different institutions in South Africa and also international. I do all the activities that you can think of on the space of assisted reproductive technology, starting from the synchronization, artificial insemination, embryo flushing, embryo transfer, the ovum pickup, and then intracytopsis sperm injection. The cloning research was still busy with it, but yeah, we have bought some microscope that we can able to use in the near future so that we can able to do cloning in, in South Africa. Thank you so much. And I think that you have a wealth of knowledge that I'm sure everyone in this space is excited to know about and learn more from you and the work that you're doing. So thank you so much for taking the time to join us here and for being part of this discussion tonight. Um, as you guys know, we have a number of experts from a number of different backgrounds always joining us in these spaces. And my next guest, Ndumiso Gule, he's a consultant with Gule Agricultural Consulting. And I'm so happy to finally have him here again. I think he's part of the Food for Mzanzi family by now. If you don't know about him, you can read more on his story on our website. That's www.foodformzanzi.co.za. But Ndumiso, I'm not going to talk any longer about you. Maybe you can just tell people. What you do, where you start in agriculture, and more about, you know, just your work in the sector. Thanks. The name is Ndumiso Gule. 
I've been fortunate to have opportunities to work for different farming sectors. My career started at Sidara, finished there. And then I moved on to work for Dr. Philip Kretzmann as a vet assistant. From there, I then worked with BTA doing pig production. From there, I worked with MSD Animal Health doing medicine. And from there, I then worked for a feedlot company where we were backgrounding and feeding cattle up to slaughter. And then I was then fortunate again to be involved with uh, Joseph Bain's estate where I was looking after a head of 538 cows and we managed to take it up to 1,400 breeding cows after six years. Well, in the, in the sector, I've got now 13 years of work in the private sector. I then decided two years ago to register a consulting company and I started working on it part-time. And then last year was it for me. I called it quits and I resigned and then consulting full-time. The area that we cover is countrywide. If you are in Northwest and you call us, we'll be there. If you are in Eastern Cape, in Limpompo and all that. So we, we travel pretty much everywhere. Uh, our strengths are livestock production. We are not that strong on the crop, but we just know enough to get by. We are still learning from animals and we are still learning from nature and mixing that with uh, human behavior. Thank you so much. As you can see, we're talking artificial insemination. And just trying to share as much information with farmers about this, if you're considering it, if you're a livestock farmer, what you should know, all the steps, all the procedures for anyone interested in doing this or practicing this um, in themselves. So let's start with the simplest question. What is artificial insemination? Dr. Masindi, would you like to take this one, please? Artificial insemination is a process whereby semen collected from the males or semen that was crap reserved being deposited in the body of uterus of the female animal. So it means you can either use fresh semen or direct semen or warm semen. You can collect the semen now. You have the cows or the female sheep or goats uh, next to the area of semen collection. You can easily transfer that semen to the recipients. Or you can purchase semen from the supplier. That semen will be on the frozen state. Then you defraud that semen and inseminate the cow when she's on heat or steady heat. So the difference between artificial insemination and uh, natural service is during artificial insemination, you have to pass and penetrate the cervix and deposit the semen there. Whereas during natural mating, the bull will deposit the semen in the vagina of the cow. Then the sperm have to find a way to penetrate the cervix and travel to the site of fertilization. Thank you so much um, for explaining that so clearly. And I now have a better understanding from my side as to how it works. Now, Numiso, do you think that um, farmers are fully optimizing this method or tool to improve um, livestock productivity? What is your experience? I mean, you've worked in different sectors. And let's focus specifically on maybe communal farmers practicing this. The AI or artificial insemination is hugely underused in the rural areas. I would say if you look at KZN, I'm more familiar with KZN and Eastern Cape. I would confidently say only about 3 to 5% of the people in these areas are doing artificial insemination. The challenge is knowledge first and the benefit that comes with AI or artificial insemination. We are still breaking ground with that. Uh, there are small different companies that do artificial insemination. These companies, including us, we battle in that in a rural setup, animals, you know, run with bulls all year round and artificial insemination is easily practiced or successfully practiced when you've got a set breeding season, when you can camp your females and know that that set of females is not pregnant and so on and so forth. Now, the challenge that we have in the rural areas is that animals are just spread all over. Now, when you start, uh, when you come in and you want to do AI and you synchronize the animals, you run a risk of making them abort. So you first have to preg test them and all those that are not pregnant need to be put aside. They must not mix with the bulls and they must be put on a better plane of nutrition. And as we know, for an animal to successfully take and fall pregnant, it's to be at least plane of nutrition for at least six weeks. That means animal must be happy getting enough feed, all the supplements, and in a good state. And then she will switch on and say, hey, I want to fall pregnant. So when you synchronize a 
she will respond much stronger and have higher chances of falling pregnant. That's the challenge, the fencing. But however, it does not stop us getting into these areas because you do find individuals within the community that are able to fence their cattle. We, as Guli Agri Consulting, we started doing trainings last year and people are grasping the concept and they see the benefits in the artificial insemination. So I feel that by the end of this year, the percentage of people that are doing artificial insemination in the rural areas and also in the emerging farmers and the black commercial farmers will increase because as we all know, it gives us that better and quicker genetic progression. A bull gets sold for 300,000 or 500,000. I can't afford to go and buy that bull, but I can afford to put together 10,000 or 20,000 rands and go buy straws of that bull and then synchronize. And I can then have access to the genetics of that bull. Thank you so much for that context. And I would maybe like to speak to the other farmer in the space, Ipe Leng. Maybe she can talk about her experience with it, you know, her practice, what it's been like, what encouraged you to do that as well, Ipe Leng, as a start. And why do you think most farmers or is it because there's enough information, like Ndumisa said, or what should we be doing to progress faster in this way and to get more people to actually consider it? I'll be talking on experience that I have on a daily basis with the farmers around the province. I personally use the pools, but I can see that there are a lot of vibrant farmers in the province that are using the artificial insemination. The breeding season is more concentrated, which allow for more efficient labor management during the breeding season and ultimately during the resulting of calving season. Thanks, Ipeling. Now, let me go back to Dr. Masindi. Maybe you can just tell us about, you know, the practice in itself. Is it the same for livestock across the board? Or could you maybe explain the difference when it comes to different breeds, different type of livestock? How does it work exactly? Please break it down for me. I have no idea how it works. So in the simplest term, but not leaving out the people who might be familiar with the practice as well. Thanks. The technique... To conduct artificial insemination, of course, it differs from cattle, sheep, goats, chicken, and pigs. But at the end of the day, we call it artificial insemination because the technician or the inseminator is the one who's transferring or deposing the semen into the reproductive tract of the animal. So let me start with the one for the cattle, even though I did talk about it. So it requires an artificial insemination rod which is plus or minus around 35 centimeters long. And then that's the tool that is going to carry the semen straw and then penetrate the, the, the surface and deposit the semen in the bottom of the uterus. So when we come to pigs, it is still called artificial insemination, but the tool that we use is called the catheter. So what happened with the catheter, it is quite long, maybe around 50 centimeters long. So you insert, you firstly clean the vulva of the sow which is on heat, insert the catheter on the vulva of the sow or the gilt until you can able to feel that you are at the opening of the cervix. Then you attach plus or minus 30 to 50 ml chop filled with semen. And then if the catheter is placed properly, you will see the flow of the semen coming out from the chop. You don't have to squeeze the chop, but in a situation where you find that someone is squeezing or is fighting with that chop so that the semen can flow in, the moment you remove the catheter, you find that you got too much blood flow because the catheter was not placed at the, at the right time. In pigs, within two minutes, you should be done to, to inseminate. And then the same apply to in cows, almost a minute you should be done. Then in chicken, it's very, very easy to conduct artificial insemination in chicken. Then you just have to know at what time are you going to inseminate the hen. Majority of the hen, they are going to lay eggs in the morning, around 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning. So advisable, you have to inseminate the chickens in the afternoon, maybe around 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. Then you just need a syringe and the semen for plus or minus 0.2 or 0.1, depending on the concentration of the sperm that you have on that particular semen sample. Then you, you put your hand behind the wings of the hand so that the chicken can be able to open up the clog. And then you insert the tip of, of the syringe, then you deposit the semen there. Then when you come to the sheep and goats, they use the same method. So you can either go surgical or non-surgical. So surgical, it means you have to shave the skin of the, of the animal, cut the skin and look for the body of the 
uterus or the fallopian tube, then you deposit the semen there. Or you can use laparoscopic uh, dissemination. If you are smart enough, you can also try to do the ways done in cattle. But the challenge is you are not going to be able to fill the cervix. So it means you can insert the rod or any pistolet and try to move within the vagina until you feel the opening of the cervix. If you are well expressed, you can able to feel the opening of the cervix, then you can take cement there. So also in sheep and goats, if it's not non-surgical, you are doing laparoscopic within two minutes, yeah, you should be done to inseminate. So in brief, this is how it's done in those different five species. Thank you so much, doctor. And um, I think realizing now, you know, with the time that we have left, I may need to do a part two um, on this because we only, you know, try to stick to an hour, but we'll see how far we get in terms of the questions, not just from myself, but also from the audience. So, Ipaleng, you don't have much time left with us. Maybe you can just talk about, you know, artificial insemination when it comes specifically to a beef production business. Artificial insemination in a beef production business, it's a method that allows beef cattle producers to use the male parents of an animal that have superior genetics at an affordable price. I mean, incorporating superior genetics into a head more rapidly improves economically important attributes such as the growth of animals, maternal and the carcass, and also decreases the incidence of difficult calving deliveries. Thanks, Ipeleng. really appreciate your time and thank you so much. I don't want to keep you here longer than I need to. Maybe we can talk specifically around artificial insemination and crossbreeding. And Dumiso, would you maybe like to take this one? More than ever, we need to venture into using more and more artificial insemination, not only in rural areas, but also in the commercial farmers. The same farmers that we look at and think they are well established, they've got their ducks in a row. They're still not using enough artificial insemination. The statistics or the people, the clever people, stated that by 2030, beef production needs to increase. How do we improve meat production without increasing the number of cows or number of sheep or goats? So let's stay with Kako in this topic. You can increase the number of kilograms of beef produced per animal through the use of better genetics. Better genetics are expensive genetics, but they are not so expensive when we come in with artificial insemination. You go into rural areas, KZN, and Eastern Cape, everywhere you go, there's a lot of inbreeding. Inbreeding is a process where a bull covers his daughter and his daughter gives birth to a calf and that calf is a weak calf, does not grow to its potential and all that, so it, it is weak. We need to correct this inbreeding or we need to reverse it. And the quickest way we can do it and the most economical way to do it is through artificial insemination. We could buy more bulls and spread bulls around, but that's going to be very expensive. So we need AI to first increase the output, the beef that is produced, the winning weights in these areas average at 180, 190 kilograms per animal. We need to raise them up to 220, 230. By adding that 20, 30 kilos extra per animal, what you are doing in, in the hindsight is you are increasing household income. You are increasing income in the business. If it's a commercial farmer or if it's an, an emerging farmer, you're increasing profits without having to carry more cows in your system or without having to acquire more grazing in your system. So I'll go back to what I had mentioned earlier is that we need to do more drives in terms of making people be aware of the cost, the cost benefit on the AI. At times we look at AI and we say it's so technical and get someone who's technical to come and do it. And this person says, oh, it's going to cost you X amount per animal. And we stop there, but we don't look at the benefit that lies in there. So I wish that the government in the highest office, which is the Department of Agriculture, I wish they intervene. I wish they back the consult the small consulting companies and empower the extension officers through using these small consulting companies to transfer skills and knowledge to the extension officers so that we can spread the, the practice of artificial insemination throughout the country. There's a disease that people don't talk 
too much about, which is called trichomonas. We have lost a lot more cattle to trike than through stock theft. Now, if you go around on farms and you go around in rural areas, in rural areas where guys got 10 cows, that guy should be getting seven calves every year. But it's not the case. He gets three, four, five if he's lucky. The rest of the cows don't give them the calves that year and they skip and, and so on and so forth. That cripples the, the livestock economy in that those animals are infected. And how trike works is that if one female is infected in the area and the bull mates with that female, that bull is going to pass on trike from this cow to an every single cow that it will mate, it will pass it on. Again, back onto education, bulls that are more susceptible to picking up trike, which is an abortion causing disease, are the older bulls, anything over three years and above. And if you look on average in the rural areas, you get bulls that are 10 years and older, eight years old. And these bulls, you look at them, he might look nice and old, but yeah, we don't know what disease is carrying there. And that's where we are losing productivity. So through AI, we can improve production efficiency from ground up. Artificial insemination, if you look in the beef sector, and even if you look at the sheep, goats aren't yet that much of a formal commodity, but they are getting there. The base of beef production is a winner, winner calf. So it's a calf that was born and at seven, eight months old, it gets taken away from the mother and goes into the feedlots to be fattened for slaughter after 150, 180 days from the day it was weaned. Now, if you don't have a quality winner calf at food, you will not have a quality carcass. The meat might be quality, but the carcass might not be as heavy as you want it to be. So it might not be economical to feed a poor animal. If you haven't got a good winner calf, you don't have a good feedlot, a profitable feedlot operation. You won't have a profitable abattoir operation. It's a value chain. So it all affects the rest. It's all connected. If we spread genetics through AI, we are going to increase the quality of winner calves that are born. Therefore, it's going to be all of a sudden profitable to feed a calf, to feed a calf. It's going to be profitable to slaughter that calf and harvest meat out of that calf and sell it. I've observed a number of upcoming farmers that start feedlot operations. It's a nice facility and they stock it up with 500 winners. But you go through the type of winners that they use here or they are feeding, you just pick up. Right away, it's a Nguni type, it's a Poran type, it's a Zebu type. It's all these type of animals that we put in brackets unimproved. It's all these animals that are good for surviving out in the wild, but aren't designed, genetically designed to produce meat in the feedlot or to convert feed that is given to them and convert it profitably. Now, we're seeing more and more of those startup feedlots closing shops because they can't make profit. Why are they not making profit? They've got the feed and they're feeding the right way. They're not feeding the right genetics. Now you ask, why are you buying these poor genetics at the sales? The guy will tell you, hey, I can't compete against beef masters, bones maras and all that because the bigger tycoons or the bigger feedlots like Triple A, Triple C, Current Beef, Sparta are paying a bit more. You know, they compete. So the poor guy gets left to scrape off the floor with the, what he can afford to take home. So through AI, we can increase the percentage of quality calves that are out there in the market. And Dumiso, I have to stop you there just for a moment. <laughs> I know that we can probably talk on this topic. I realize now I'm going to split it over two sessions. So I'm going to definitely invite all of you back next week, if, if that's possible, if your schedule allows for it. In the work that we do at Food from Zanzi, we want to advocate for this specifically with the points that you're raising. Thank you so much. I see we have two of our listeners who'd like to contribute. So Dintle, I'm going to give you a chance um, to, to take the mic. Thanks. You have a question or comment to our speakers. Good evening, everybody. My question is that we've been trying to do this AI thing, more especially in the rural and emerging setup, but we are literally battling with conception rates. You find that the conception rates fall just below 20% most of the time. So I would like to hear from the speakers, if ever they have done AI in the rural communal setup, what steps would they give to people that are practicing artificial 
impregnating in those type of setups um, so that they can be able to increase their conception rate. Thanks. Thank you so much. Dr. Msid, would you like to take this one, perhaps? Yeah, I've done artificial insemination throughout the country for many, many years, working in the deep uh, rural areas. So in, in some inst- cases, we found a conception rate of around 40% to 70%, but that one differ from, from one farmer to another, even in the same province or the same area. So the thing that you have to consider, first of all, you have to make sure that your animals are free from brucella about health disease. So that disease... Even if you use a good quality semen, you use the best bowl. So the cows, they are going to lose the embryo at the early stage of, of conception. So you have to make sure that there's no brucella botas in your, in your head. And also, if you are going to use the bowl, you have to make sure that you do something that we call the breeding sound evaluation. You are testing the fertility of that bull just the one month before the breeding season can start. So you'll be checking for the trichomonas disease and the campylobacter also the Brucella abortus and then the semen quality of that particular animal. So when it comes to the females, the best thing to do, you have to make sure that your animals they are in good body condition. So they, throughout the year, they must not lose their body condition score. What happens in animals is if January, February, March, your animal is in good body condition score, winter comes, around August, September, your animals starting to become thinner and thinner, then it start to rain again in December, you want to breed immediately. So the animal haven't fully recovered. But in your eyes, you realize that all oh, the animals, now they are starting to change, they are starting to gain weight. But from the physiological point of view, the ovaries are still sleeping, which means these cows, they are not going to ovulate. These cows, they might show ustras, but without, without ovulation, we call it a false ustras. Then also pay also more attention on the quality of the semen that you are using when you conduct artificial insemination. We assume that you synchronize your animal as per protocol and the animal responded. But uh, on the day of artificial insemination, you have to make sure that you buy semen from the reliable source and you get a person who can able to conduct artificial insemination uh, successfully. So if you can just do some of those uh, basic stuff to make sure that your animals doesn't suffer or doesn't lose their body condition throughout the year, then it's a one tick. And then you synchronize them at the right time, you inseminate them with a good quality cement, then they, you can able to move from 20% maybe to 40% is possible. Did I hope that he answered your question. I think so, yes. Um, I was hoping to get Ndumiso to also respond to this one, but... Maybe he'll reconnect. I know that he's on the road and he actually had to pull over to talk to us. So I do appreciate his time um, that he could spend with us. And I'm definitely going to do a part two on this. So hoping he'll come back because I think he's has a lot of passion for this. And I would like to give all of you as much space to learn and grow in this because I think there's definitely a need for it. If you'd like to ask any other questions, remember you can gra- grab the mic. Um, I hope I'm saying this right. Uh, up here. Uphill. I don't know how to say your name. If you could just unmute your mic, you have a specific question for our speakers, like to contribute. Um, you are welcome. Thanks. Hello. I'm from India. I'm just asking one question about animal breeding. I just want to ask one question about how to get a best breed in cow. Okay. Thank you. Um, so this question all the way from India. Thank you so much for joining us. So how to get the best breed? If, if that's what I'm understanding. I'm going to take two more questions. Pangela, the floor is yours. Um, you can ask your question. Thanks. Good evening, everyone. I just want to ask uh, Dr. Masindi. There are no short courses to become a, an artificial inseminator around Gauteng. Because I live in Pumalanga province, the nearest town for me is going to be Pretoria. So I've just heard that is located at Irene. I just want to know, they are not offering short courses so that I will be able to do it for myself because around our area, we don't have, I've never seen one, an artificial inseminator. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dr. Masindi, would you like to take this one? Thanks. I will start with the last question regarding the courses. So yesterday, our IT guys, they post the courses that are offered here in ERC. For the cattle artificial insemination course, I'm going to offer it as from the 29th to 31 May 2023. 
and the course is 2,500 rand. So we offer a lot of courses from poultry, small stock, meat processing, a lot of courses, but they are more possible on the one for reproduction. So to answer the second question regarding the how to get the good breed, the quickest way to get the good breed when you are keeping your cattle breed that you are having currently, it will be through embryo transfer technology. Because during embryo transfer, you are transferring the full genome to that particular and then you are going to get 100% of what we have put in. For example, let's say you are farming with Botsmara, you need a beef master. So you take the embryo for beef master to Botsmara, the offspring will be 100% beef master. So that's the quickest way to get a breed that you prefer or that you think is a good breed in your environment. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Masindi. Omaidi, you can take the floor. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. And first of all, I do appreciate this session. I do have a question here. I'm currently living in a very small holding. I am looking after, you know, chickens, but I am honestly interested in taking up this AI courses, etc. I'm based in Walkerville, which is Jobek South. I will honestly appreciate, you know, more info, whether it's remotely or physical attendance. My specialty is in IT, AI, but obviously it's artificial intelligence. It's the opposite of this one. Yeah, do appreciate the time, guys. Please share the links, the courses, and I'm in. Thank you so much. I will definitely be able to get in touch with you. And I think Dr. Masindi was talking about short courses that are available at the ARC. Um, but please do DM me for more details. And like I mentioned, all of this will be available on Food from Zazi's website as well. Farmboy, you have a specific question or comment? Yes, thank you very much. Um, after attending a course by Ndumiso, I was, I was inspired to, to try this artificial insemination thing after attending the course in beef production. However, I was a little bit shocked on the expense side of things, or how things are expensive on the equipment side of things. So I just want to find out usually or what's the estimated cost for having someone to come and do uh, insemination for you. Although I am looking into getting my own equipment now, but I just wanted to find out a rough estimate on the cost of having someone do it for you. Thank you. Thanks, Fanboy. Doctor, would you like to take that on, just some of the cost involved? Yeah, regarding the cost, we will charge you for the distance, for the kilometers. So even if, let's say, you ask me to come and simulate a one cow in, in Deben, so if they, we have to charge you for that one cow. So if it's 100 cows, the kilometer doesn't change. Then if we exclude the synchronization, you just want the labor, which means me standing behind your cow for less than uh, one minute. So it's around plus or minus 300 rand. So the larger the number, the higher the discount. But if I'm just coming to the event, we say need one cow. If it's 300 rand, we're going to charge you 300 rand. But if it is, the head is too big, you might find that we are in head up in maybe under 150 to 200 rand per cow. Thank you so much. Common mistakes and shortfalls that farmers make when they're doing AI. I think there's so much ground to cover because I also wanted to talk about the paperwork, for example. And then how do you know that you're getting good semen? Like, what do you look for? How does that get tested? What what goes into it? Okay, there was a lot said there, but maybe we can just start with um, shortfalls and then move from there. Dr. Masinde? From the RC side, because we, we were a research institution, so we try to eliminate all possible mistakes as much as possible. So let's say a farmer asks me to come and disseminate maybe 100 cows in Deben. So the... He bought the straw somewhere in Kauten. So what I do, I go to the Artificial Insemination Center. We have our own mobile lab, which is fitted with a very complicated, uh, sophisticated microscopes. So I will sell maybe two or three straws with the supply so that they can see the quality of the cement that they're giving. Because you find that as a farmer, you just go there and buy a cement straw. Maybe they gave you a poor quality patch. And you cement all those 100 cows, only one or two or 20 of them, Conceive. Now you try to point fingers to maybe the person who psychronized the animal or the person who is seen with the animal, whereas the fault was on the quality of the semen. And the other issue that you have to pay into attention, if you are not psychronizing the animals, which means you are just relying on the natural behavior, like our natural cycle, which is average 21 days, the cow will come on heat if she's not pregnant. So to say the cow is on heat, whereas the cow is not on heat, then 
you are going to insert the cow that you think is going to eat, what else is going to eat? Then at the end of the day, because there's no egg released from the cow's ovary, you will deposit the semen, the sperm will travel, the follow the tube, the sperm will wait and wait, and then at the end of the day, they realize that there's no egg coming, then the sperm will die. And also, you have to try in all means to make sure that your, your head is free from sexually transmitted diseases such as the Brussels abortus. But if you are farming the communal setup, it becomes highly impossible because you, you don't have control to the grazing area. So, but for those who you can able to separate the animal from somebody else, they have to make sure that your head is, is free. And then you always make sure that when you are bringing new animals, you must be 100% sure that this animal doesn't have any disease that's going to come and compromise the head performance. Then after that, you also have to make sure that you, you get someone who can able to conduct the artificial insemination uh, successfully. So of course, good things, you have to pay a lot. Same apply with the quality of the semen. And uh, preferable, we have noticed that nowadays farmers, they are skewing a bit to use the sex sorted semen so that the semen that if let's say you are you want your offspring to be female you buy the semen stock that's going to give female if you want the your offspring to be male you buy the semen that's going to give you that particular product yeah that they did the the challenge so far is the the conception rate when you use sex sorted semen is low compared to the traditional semen and also the price for the sex sorted uh, straw is quite high, plus or minus 1,000 rand per straw, compared to our traditional straw, which is plus or minus 100 rand to 300 rand, maybe. So those are some of the things. And also, if you are going to use the sex sorted semen straw, you must use something that we call the timed artificial insemination, which means you're not just going to do artificial insemination. You must know exactly at what time are you going to consider artificial insemination. And also, when you select the animal that we are going to use or subject to the synchronization and artificial insemination program, you have to be very, very strict. So you have to select the animal that you, you are confident that they are in good condition. You know they are cycling uh, normal. If it's the cows, you know they've already calved before, but if it's the you just have to make sure that they, they are ready to be serviced. And then you also try in all means that your animals are well taken care throughout the year, then on that, you can be able to improve conception rate using artificial insemination also if, if, if you are using the, the, the board. Thanks, Dr. Masendi. We have a question here, but I think we may have covered it already. Michael E. Teko asking, what's an average price for embryo transfer for small stock, and it is specifically goats? And do you have a catalog? He says that he's aware that straw ranges from 100 to 700 rand. I think you have mentioned that, but uh, maybe just to recap once again, just for this listener, Tamasendi. And he's specifically talking about goats in this regard. I'm not a specialist in the small stock. I just assist. So if it's the large number of the goats that he's talking about, the sheep, say, I will re- uh, refer him to Remsen Company which is situated in Bluefontein. So those are the guys who are leading on the space of, of sheep and goats in terms of artificial insemination and uh, embryo transfer. Thank you so much, Dr. Masindi. I want to talk more about the paperwork, and I don't know if Dr. Masindi, if you can respond to this, but there are application processes, right, that you'd have to go through for the semen collection used in AI, so forms and procedures and application. How long does this process usually take and, you know, what goes into it? What are some of the records that you should have in place? We spoke about checking, for example, for sexually transmitted diseases. What are the steps that you have to take before you consider this, if you're considering it in the first place? Thanks. Yeah, the course that we offer in ERC, so I'll just talk on the one that I offer for myself for artificial insemination. So it's a three days course. So after that, you're also going to write a test and assignment. Then if you feel like you want to be registered as a artificial inseminator, so that's where the paperwork starts. So you have to go to the DAF and then do the application. Then from my side, they will request the marks that you got from your test and assignment and also attendance register. You have to renew your certificate every year if you skip or you forget to renew your license. So what they do nowadays, they terminate you completely from their system. You have to go back to the class and then do the, follow the same procedure, and then after that, you are registered again. Then from your farm, 
Of course, you have to know what are you bringing in in your farm, which means you must try in all means to buy from the reliable supplier. But if you already have some cattle or sheep or goats, you can, there's a way you can still improve on what we are cutting them. It's not like we have to sell them on our way or slaughter them. So you can either decide that I'm going to take the road of uh, embryo transfer, which means you have to do that. You must have to make sure that the paperwork is done properly. There is a new genetic that we don't have it. And then after that, if it's embryo transfer, it will be quick for you to improve your head. But if you are going to use artificial insemination, of course, it means it will, at a flesh emission will give you 50%. It go and then you continue doing that until your head change completely to to certain breed. Then, but if you are you are farming with certain breeders in Buni, Botswana, you fall under certain breeder society. Of course, there's a lot of paperwork that need to be done, and then they they can also come and uh, grade or screen your animals, judge them whether this one will be commercial or regarded as a start and so forth. So there's a lot of paperwork that you need to follow if one want to farm with particular breeds. So you start you rather start to to read or to inquire more information about that particular breed society so that as time goes on the next two years, three years you fully understand where you're going and then now because there'll be a lot of people that need to be done or that need to come from your side. And then as agriculture side concern, we are always there to support you. Just that uh, sometimes we don't have enough funds. So but our goal as IRC is to support every farmer in the country. So if you need something specific, you can just contact me. If I is something from other division, let's say you are need something about nutrition or genetics, then I will transfer or refer you to those particular uh, researchers that deal with that other uh, component. Thank you so much, Dr. Masendi. Um, and we really appreciate all the time that you're giving us this evening you know, sharing your knowledge and your expertise in this field and also just making yourself available. I think that is really appreciated. Now, there's a question here from Mamadi asking, what is South Africa or Africa's position and performance in this field compared to global participants or the global landscape when it comes to AI? And then another question is also around how much is government involved in this field? I know that this is something that Ndumiso was also talking about earlier in terms of getting government to actually support agricultural extension officers to be trained up and getting the consultants who's actually doing the work um, in this regard on the ground and supporting them and then get more involved for more rural farmers and communal farmers to actually take this up and it will definitely change the game for them. Dr. Masindi, maybe you can talk more specifically about how we compare to the rest of Africa and our performance globally. Thanks. I won't touch the part of the government. So in terms of performance, uh, artificial insemination where in beef cattle is less than 5%. So if you compare to other countries like Brazil, Brazil, almost every farmers conduct artificial insemination. So that's why those guys, they are so ahead of us when you come to artificial insemination. So we're far behind if we compare to, we compare ourselves with Brazil, but compared to other countries in, in Africa, I think we are more or less the same page. Plus or minus 5% of the farmers conduct artificial insemination as compared to in dairy farmers where almost more than 90% of the dairy industry or dairy farmers they conduct artificial insemination. And also to add on that, embryo transfer in Africa, we contribute less than 3% according to the International Embryo Transfer Society estates. So we are contributing very, very little on the space of assisted reproductive technologies. Thank you so much, Dr. Masindi. There's one question here, doctor, before we go. Can the doctor please elaborate more uh, for us regarding synchronization, the synchronization process? What actually gets the cow onto heat? If we can take that last question, um, please, doctor. Thanks. Synchronization means the process of bringing a large number of cows into it at the same time. So the, what do we do? We synchronize the development of new follicular wave on the cow's ovary. So basically, this is what happened. So naturally, uh, let's say you've got 50 cows or 100 cows. If you go to the crawl, you'll find one or two cows mounting to each other and so forth. So today you can find three cows, tomorrow 10, today after nothing. So because we want to use artificial insemination, we want to make all these cows 
to cycle at the same time so that all of them they can ovulate or they can reveal the egg at the same day. So what we do, we insert something that we call the controlled intravaginal drug release on the vagina of the cows. So that device, it contains pregnancy hormone, which is the progesterone. So the moment we put that device in the vagina of the cows for up to eight days, all the cows, if they're all 100, they will think they're all pregnant. Whereas me and you, we know that these cows, they're not pregnant. So this cow, for the next eight days, they will all think they're pregnant, which means they're not going to see any cow showing sign of estrus or mounting other cows or be mounted by the bull or whatever and so on. Then, after that, during that eight days period, we come and stimulate the ovarian activity so that the ovary must be active, so that the follicles must uh, be recruited, so that dominant follicle become present. So on the day eight, when we remove that device that we put on the vagina of the cow, so this animal now, they will realize, no, we are not pregnant because we are removing the pregnancy hormone. Now they realize, no, they are, they are not pregnant at all. So what must they do? They must start to show sign of stress. So we stimulate, we suppress the progesterone hormone and stimulate sign of stress and ovulation. So now the progesterone will be declining, uh, estradiol hormone will be going up. So pregnancy hormone and uh, heat or estrus hormone, they don't support each other. So if the cow is pregnant, she's not supposed to behave like a cow is not pregnant. And the cow which is not pregnant, not supposed to behave like a cow which is pregnant. So this in manner, they realize that they're not pregnant. Then depending on the protocol that we'll be using, then we, we, we stimulate estrus. A day after, we stimulate ovulation. So when we stimulate ovulation, we, we also put some patch or the heat monitor detectors on the back tail of the animal. So those devices, they are white in color. So those animals around this time, they will be starting to mount each other the whole night until tomorrow. And then, then after that, we come and do and, and this sacrament and, and inseminate. So basically what's happening, we're just changing the wave pattern because you are supposed to have a cow coming on each tomorrow, other one day after tomorrow. You block all those activities so that all of them, they might think they are pregnant. And then now you can yeah, have a control over their cycle. Then after that, you can be able to know when they're going to ovulate and then you know when you're going to inseminate. So it's the same principle even when we are doing a uh, embryo transfer. You, we make this animal to think they are pregnant. Then later, they will start to show sign of stress. When they are on stress, when they are looking for the bull, we don't inseminate this animal. We want that egg which is released to die. So that seven days later, we come with the embryo, we transfer to those animals that we circulate. Thank you so much, Dr. Masindi. And I'm definitely inviting you back to the second part for everyone who contributed, asked questions, engaged with um, tonight's topic. I really appreciate it. So again, Dr. Masindi from the Agricultural Research Council, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. And enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone. Bye.